How a lovelorn leg beard nearly ended me. Well, I'm glad she didn't use her music of the fox. Welcome to the channel. This is part one of two, both parts rather long, so I will split them into separate videos. Hello to Reddit and Red X Industries. I've been listening to Red X on the YouTube for years now. God, I have been doing this a while, haven't I? <laughs> Your lively endeavors into the beard lore have helped me crawl out of my neurodivergent shell and helped me do boring human things like clean and organize. Very important, organized room is an organized mind. Although, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, <laughs> depends on the day, I guess. Lately, I've been reminiscing about my own cringeworthy high school and junior college days and I just had to join Reddit to share. Yes, nine hours ago. This is so fresh. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't have those terribly heavy tales that so many have. This is going to be more cringe and less soul crushing. This set of stories is about a derpy leg beard, and I think I require a bit of a diagnosis from y'all to confirm that status. I mean, I might lean towards Kavina since she was more clueless than malicious, but one thing is for certain. There is cringe involved. And that is why we gathered here today. <laughs> I met and befriended her after switching high schools. This story is about her lovelorn escapades and how I almost ended up not alive that one time after saving her butt. She probably don't even acknowledge it either. OP does ask for our forgiveness because this all took place 20 or so years ago. I've forgotten a few details along the way but some of them play over in my head at 2 a.m. when I'm lying awake in bed, trying to go to sleep. <laughs> uh, yes, those formative thoughts. A couple of these things I wouldn't dare speak about in public, but I figure that a little internet anonymity will make me brave. Your identity is safe with me, OP. <laughs> I've never written on Reddit before, and I guess they use cast lists, so uh, here's a cast list. Foxy! We're gonna call her OP, but that's OP. <coughs> Female, a high school sophomore when this story began. I transferred to another school and somehow became a junior, taking junior and senior classes. Awkward, a bit overweight, and really into books, art, and music. Artist! I have to call her this because while she was an artist at the time, she looks straight out of a Renaissance painting. Super sweet, but grounded person. She is now an art slash English teacher for young children, and I think that defines her very well. New York, a super extrovert who pulled me, a super introvert, into the fold and out into the real world. It's always how it works. <laughs> Extroverts adopting introverts. She, for real, had a girl from a small town that goes to New York and does cool things story right after high school. Spoiler, she ran out of money. <laughs> She has a nice way of being honest without being an a-hole. Like, she would tell you that you should pluck that unibrow, but she'd do so privately. There was also Athlete, only one of us that was remotely athletic. She had been friends with the other girls since first grade. She was completely no-nonsense, maybe even picked on the beard just a little bit. Woods is a boy, and he is the milady of this story. <laughs> he looked very much like Elijah Wood, and as this story starts around the time that the second Lord of the Rings movie came out, every girl in school was gushing about him. He was not the only object of this beard's desire, but he was definitely her main squeeze. Or so she wanted it to be, I suppose. And then of course we have uh, the titular leg beard of the tail, uh, starfish beard. Short, like five foot nothing, round with tiny feet and hands reminiscent of a starfish. <laughs> uh, that's that's creepy, dude. You got enough fingers, but they're arranged all wrong. <laughs> she had a puffy, round face with small facial features all toward the center of her face, short orange-red frizzy hair, and millions of freckles. Not very flattering. I'm, tr I'm not judging somebody on their looks, you know. But already, we are starting to paint a picture. <laughs> the rest of the cast is either mentioned once or pretty self-explanatory. Our first sub-story, I suppose it is, making friends, yeah. 
family circumstances led us to relocating to be closer to my ailing great-grandparents in my sophomore year. This was a small town. All the other students knew each other since preschool. For the first month or so after I transferred, pretty much every other student ignored my existence completely. When I say I'm an introvert, I mean it. At the time, I could barely make eye contact with a person that I didn't know, and what made it worse was that the other students in my classes were two years older than me, so it felt like we had nothing in common. It's okay, OP. Your extrovert will be here to pick you up shortly. <laughs> Things were not looking promising until one day at lunch when I get waved to a table. I'd never been beckoned that way before, so I checked behind me real quick to make sure it wasn't a case of a wave for someone behind me. New York, you! Yeah, you! Come over here! Sit down! <laughs> I meekly came and sat at the table. On this day, it was just New York and artists there. I'd recognize them from the one time that we had to get our choir outfits ordered. We were the only three that had to order from the plus size section, and we had spent nearly an hour trying to find the dress that actually matched the regular ones in the catalogs. God, that makes me sound old. <laughs> uh, you're in good company, honestly. Other than that, I hadn't really talked to them before. Artist, hey, so you just moved to town? I've seen you in band and choir. You're like a senior, right? No, I'm a junior, actually, I think, I replied. I just take a lot of senior classes. Artist, oh, do you have a license and a car? Oh no, I thought. They just wanted somebody who could drive them around. Rejection incoming, OP. Well, no, I'm actually only 15. I just got bumped into older classes because this school doesn't have a running start program. But sweet artist didn't miss a beat. Dang, that's okay. We're 15 too, sophomores. You're really good, you know, in music. You should hang out with us more. New York is practicing to go to state after we finish our lunch. You should come with us. And that one interaction was what saved me. I can never be more thankful that those two decided that I looked lonely once and adopted me. It's a beautiful thing. Little did I know, however, that they had adopted someone before me, but she had been gone that particular month. From that time forward, I sat at their table every lunch. Athlete joined us the next day, and thereafter, it was peaceful for about an entire month. And then came Starfish Beard. It's been so long that I don't remember why she had been gone. She just suddenly kind of reappeared at the table. I recognized her from the back row in one of my choir classes. She was so unique looking. How could I not recognize her? I like that. You didn't say ugly, just unique looking. Points for OP. As leg beards go, she wasn't terrible. Well groomed, smelled okay. Cute in her own way, uh, but while the others and I were a little pudgy, Starfish Beard was large, like almost as big around as she was tall. She was very short, and her tiny hands and feet made her arms and legs seem like they came to a point. Oh, I get it. Everything's falling into place now. <laughs> Duh! <laughs> she was wearing skinny jeans, only... They weren't skinny jeans. This was after Y2K. You remember? I remember. <laughs> Baggy, low-rise jeans were in. These jeans were skin tight, like two or more sizes too small. Her shirt was just a little short, so a blinding white stripe of muffin top peeked out. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Her short, curly red hair was pulled back tight into a little poof ponytail, and she wore glasses that somehow made her tiny eyes appear even smaller. Jeez, man, the genetic lottery was not kind. <laughs> uh, I don't want to say it, but yeah, that's kind of the way it's looking. But let's try to judge her on her actions, okay? So Starfish Beard sat at the table with her half-empty tray, facing away from me and staring off somewhere, ignoring her food, ignoring me, and she sighed. Not a sigh of relief or a sigh of impatience. No, this was a theatrical girlish sigh. Yeah, you know that one. It means, please ask me what's wrong. <laughs> I would learn eventually that this was the starfish beard sigh trademark. The signature sigh, the sigh 
of unrequited love. Looking back, it almost reminded me of some anime character, only this was way before anime was mainstream. Yeah, I don't know, I'm pretty sure Starfish Beard caught Inuyasha on Adult Swim or something like that. Anyway, at this point, I am obviously confused. I couldn't tell that Starfish Beard was staring at someone, just that she was staring away from us and making her weird noises. I cleared my throat to maybe get her attention so I could introduce myself. New York intervened to me quietly. Don't engage. You don't even want to know. So I swallowed my greeting. <laughs> oh, Starfish Beard! New York barked at her. Leave that boy alone! Starfish Beard finally turns towards us. Starfish Beard's voice was soft, almost like whimpering. He's just so beautiful. We could have had beautiful babies. He'd be so perfect. I mean, I'm short, so he doesn't have to worry that he's short. And we both have curly hair. Cha, hobbit babies. Athlete murmured under her breath. <laughs> uh, boom, smashed, burnt. New York held back a snort and tried to redirect Starfish Beard. Yeah, well, you should actually eat something today, you know? Hey, we ordered you a choir dress. You weren't here, so we just used the measurements you put down before you left. Starfish Beard didn't even acknowledge that attempted change of subject. She didn't start staring again, but she did push her overcooked peas and carrots around on her plate. New York. Hey, Starfish Beard, this is OP. She just moved in here. She's gonna hang with us from now on. You know if from choir or something, right? Starfish Beard muttered a greeting and did smile at me. But then, again, went back to pushing peas around her plate, staring blankly at a wall. <laughs> what a fascinating human being. That's her two main personality traits. One, lovesick. Two, doesn't enjoy mushy peas. <laughs> and, uh, this became a trend. Starfish Beard would seemingly daydream in the lunchroom, then throw her food out and just drink a liter of soda from the vending machine. Oh yeah, vitamins and minerals, don't you know? <laughs> Artist in New York would attempt to engage with her now and then. Athlete found her utterly exhausting. Starfish Beard seemed contentedly discontent existing at our table. I found her sweet whenever she did interact with us, but just about everything that came out of her mouth was some sort of pining for this boy or some other boy. I thought this must be what it meant to be romantic. I was fully aware that I was emotionally a late bloomer at best. Perhaps she was just more advanced than the rest of us. I don't know, sophomore year might be the time for that awakening, but this is like a really hard awakening, isn't it? Maybe ease into something like this. Maybe don't sacrifice your whole personality to be some dude's plaything, right? Whatever. So life went on, and eventually the box with our choir outfits arrived. Everyone else in the choir already had their outfits because the straight-sized ones got there a month earlier. They were those kind of dresses that we knew we would need to have altered in some way, so we needed them a little early. The four of us, New York artist Starfish Beard and I, went to try them on as quickly as we could. Because I have a large bust, my top was really big, but it turned out nice. Artists in New York were pleased as well. Artists in my tops were going to need to be taken in a little bit, but we did expect that. As we chattered, we were interrupted by a huge sob. We stopped. And now, quiet, small whimpering sounds came from the last stall. Oh, it's like that ghost from Harry Potter or something, right? <laughs> hey, Starfish Beard, uh, are you okay? Asked New York. Only sobbing came from the other side of that door. Artist spoke softly through the door for several minutes until eventually Starfish Beard did open the door. I really, really feel sorry for Starfish Beard for this one. The top of the dress was a button-down satin material, and well, it came about four inches short of buttoning. As it turned out, Starfish Beard put down the measurements for her bust only, and her stomach came out quite a bit further than that. Oof. It's... it's not that bad. I think... I think we can fix it, Artis said hopefully. Starfish Beard. No! 
It was so expensive. There's no way my adoptive mama let me buy another one. She said that too. She always referred to her parents as her adoptive parents. She would occasionally talk about her birth mother, and whenever she did, it was with some sort of reverence. Like she romanticized her early childhood, even though I'm pretty sure she was taken away because of a very deeply involved addiction. She would often act as though her adoptive parents were abusive, but I think it was far more likely that they actually just, you know, parented her and set boundaries. I mean, this seems like a not an ideal situation. Part of me wants to feel sympathy for her, but when she comes out the gate like expecting the sympathy, <laughs> I take my sympathy back immediately. Anyway, it didn't matter if her mom wouldn't buy her a new one or not because these were the catalog days. There was no true two-day shipping magic. Getting a new dress would take six weeks, minimum, and we had a choir trip in only two weeks. You're gonna hear me saying this a lot, but my mother in particular, that lady's a saint. I told her about this situation in tears myself, and she did the alterations to my dress, and Athlete's mom did the alterations to Artist's dress. The two moms then did sewing magic, using the excess fabric from our dresses to sew a back panel into Starfish Beard's dress. Because the panel was in the back, you couldn't even tell. It was amazing! Both of those mothers, just domestic goddesses. You all came together to fix this situation for Starfish Beard. Did she say thank you at any point? <laughs> uh, what do you want to bet she didn't? Uh, the band and choir trip. This one time at band camp. <laughs> oh yeah, that movie everybody saw. We came from a small town in the Pacific Northwest. Not a lot of anything in our hometown. A few times a year, the choir and or band would go to some music festival or state competition. For the life of me, I can't remember the name of that festival, but it took place on the Oregon coast in early spring. And the school was pretty cool about it. We had raised money to pay for cheap hotel rooms, almost right on the beach. They would take a two-hour dinner stop at a large mall outside of Portland on the bus ride over and let us country kids experience some real shopping. That's right, children. You must learn to consume! <laughs> I was super excited. I had worked odd jobs and saved up money to buy stuff at the mall and later on the boardwalk at the beach. My friends and I managed to corner off the last three rows of seats to ourselves. We took turns listening to my Walkman until the battery died. It was during this trip that I finally got to put a face to the legend. Starfish Beard. There! There he is! Oh, he's sitting so close this time! Okay, that's happenstance, alright? That doesn't mean anything. Please don't start journaling about it like the obsessive love video that we did yesterday. But yes, of course, at this point, OP looked up, quite curious. The only other time that Starfish Beard had ever stared at him, there was too much of a crowd for me to be able to pick him out. Which one is it? I asked. Starfish Beard. There! Two rows in front of Athlete. Oh, he's just so... Mm. Oh. Starfish Beard sigh, trademark. <laughs> we were about to stop at the mall at this time, and I saw the boy that she had been talking about. This was Wood. At this point, I knew he was a freshman and was short with dark curly hair. The bus stops and he stands up. Eh, he wasn't all that short. I mean, he was my height, five foot five, but come on. He was a freshman. No wonder I had trouble picking this guy out. Then he turned around. I'll admit, he was gorgeous. Beautiful. Now I knew why. More than just starfish beard would talk about him. He had thick, dark, curly hair and a charming smile. But I swallowed down any like that I had for this guy because, well, thy shall not crush on thy friend's top crush, or something like that. I mean, you're implying with that statement that Starfish Beard stood a chance anyways. <laughs> Not to be mean, but I mean, looks match is a thing. Just don't tell the involuntary celibates that I said that. <laughs> Seriously, now I realize that this guy Starfish Beard was pining for was way out of her league. He was out of my league. He was out of all of our leagues. 
Now I got why New York was always bashing on Starfish Beard's little crush. It was clear that she hadn't even spoken to him before, or at least not anytime recently. Artist New York and athlete were actually decent friends with him in middle school, missing him by a year. I suspect that Starfish Beard started hanging out with them in an attempt to get closer to Woods. What a tangled web we weave! My friends started getting off the bus ahead of me, and I had been momentarily stunned. I quickly bent over to get my wallet out of my backpack on the floor when I felt a pop and a sharp pain in my side. I yelped and stood up suddenly and reached under my shirt. I pulled my hand back and saw blood. Athletes stopped to make sure I was okay. It took me a minute to realize that the wire in my brassiere had suddenly liberated itself and stabbed me under my arm. Bro, what? The, now I got a thousand more things to be scared of. Make sure you buy a new one at the mall that you just pulled up at, I guess. OP says she cried like a baby because it surprised me, and I had only brought one of them on this trip. Athlete's mom, who was chaperoning, rushed over and inspected my small wound, stuck a band-aid on it, and pulled the underwire all the way out. With only one wire, it created a very Quasimodo type of look. <laughs> with one honker donker sitting a couple inches lower than the other hoingo boingo. <laughs> uh, oh, don't worry, honey, said Athlete's mom. It'll hold together for now. And look, we're here at the mall. You can get a new one. They even have a Victoria's Secret here. She winked at me. You can get something real nice. Oh, Athlete's mom likes to get her swerve on, doesn't she? The secret's out! <laughs> <laughs> At this point, my other three friends had come back onto the bus to find out what was taking me so long. Starfish Beard's face perked up when she heard Victoria's Secret. Starfish Beard, Oh, OP! You should really see it! Everything is so beautiful! Let's go! I reluctantly left the bus with my pack of friends and traipsed through the mall. That's how you know it was the year 2000. Two decades later, it's just a ghost town, <laughs> if it exists at all. I felt really uncomfortable and uneven, crossing my arms, hoping no other students would notice. We made our beeline to the VS, gaudy, pink, smelling way too strongly of way too many perfumes. I gave a look to New York once we arrived, a look of embarrassment and pain and misery. I'd never gone bra shopping with anyone other than my mother before. Now I was here with friends that I was honestly still trying to impress. New York got the message. She hand signaled athlete and artist to follow her lead and walked past the store as I went in. Starfish Beard did not get this signal, however. I would not expect her to. <laughs> but New York says, hey, Starfish Beard, come on. We're going to get some food. I'm hungry. How about we go get a slice, huh? Starfish Beard says, No, I'm not really hungry. New York. Hey, look, I think OP just kind of wants to shop alone for that type of stuff. Uh, don't you, OP? Starfish Beard interjects. But I wanted to go here before, and I promise I won't be in the way, OP. You can go try things on. I'll even stay in the front of the store. I promise. New York gave me an apologetic look that said, I tried, <laughs> and then took the others to the food court. Yeah, you did try, but now you're abandoning me. <laughs> Never mind, I don't want to go here now. Not with you. I'm going the corn dog on a stick. But what was that one from the Stratbeard saga? Wetzel's pretzels. <laughs> uh, uh. Anyways, OP made her way into the back of the store, with all the over-the-shoulder boulder holders, to quickly find something suitable. Meanwhile, Starfish Beard was wading through lingerie that wasn't even close to her size, touching the lace with her pudgy little hands and sighing TM. <sighs> As it turned out, I had no idea what size I was. I'd been too embarrassed to think about it when I had been shopping before. Eventually, a sales lady came to my aid. She told me that underwires do tend to burst out when you wear ones that are too small, and she helped me to make a quick selection. Some boring, skin-colored t-shirt underwear, because lacy cute things were really only made for the smaller endowed among us. 
Not that I really cared that much at the time. I just wanted to leave. I made my purchase and returned to Starfish Beard, who was now fawning over all the perfumes. Oh, P, you really should try some perfume, Starfish Beard said, coming at me with a sample bottle. I've already tried on three. It's <laughs> uh, not how you're supposed to do that. <laughs> I was hesitant. I mean, I was happy she found something she could enjoy on this trip. At the same time, I'm very sensitive to smells. I get headaches and nausea from some of these perfumes and colognes out there. I was already getting a little dizzy just from being in the rest of the store. I guess I could try one, I conceded. You're gonna end up throwing up on the bus. <laughs> OP treads lightly here, trying to find the cleanest, simplest scent with the hopes that it wouldn't turn me sick. I finally decided on one that smelled like baby powder in a bottle and offered up a wrist to Starfish Beard. I had expected a little dabble, but she dosed me pretty good all the way up my arm. <laughs> I gave a little cough and suggested that we make sure to get something to eat before we had to get back to the bus. Oh, this is this is cooking up into something, isn't it? <laughs> I wolfed down some soup from the food court so I would have time to see the hot topic. I had wanted to get a t-shirt there, but I had just blown my funds on my new undergarment, so I just window shopped. Starfish Beard did the same, complaining that her adoptive parents didn't give her any spending money. We met up with the others and got back on the bus. See, OP said she was working, saving up for this. Starfish Beard just sticks her hand out. Come on, get it together, you shameless. <laughs> After we had been on the road for a little while, athlete who was sitting next to me began to sniff. Whoa, you like really smell like aftershave, she told me. Not at all discreetly. I smelled my arm. She was not joking. The perfume had reacted with my skin in such a way that it smelled like men's cologne. I explained that it was a woman's perfume and that it smelled much different in the store. Yo, were you sure? Asked New York as she gave my arm a sniff. Huh, it really does smell like cologne. At this, Starfish Beard practically pulled Athlete out of her seat. Let, let me smell, let me! She sat next to me with my arm pulled up to her face and took a good, long sniff. Oh, it really does. Starfish Beard sighed, TM. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, I bet that's what he smells like. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Uh, the spine is starting to fracture. I turned beet red. New York rolled her eyes. Artist and athlete gave me a wide-eyed look of pure cringe. Meanwhile, Starfish Beard continued to smell my arm while staring at the back of Woods' head. I'd Starfish Beard, New York barked, pulling her away from my arm after what seemed like an eternity, but was probably actually only a minute. You make it OP uncomfortable. Heck, you're making me uncomfortable. Go back to your seat. Starfish Beard gave a little whimper. Gave my arm one more quick sniff, <laughs> and then scuttled back to the back row seat that she had claimed earlier. I tried to reset my brain after what had just happened. I think the others were trying to do the same because no one said a single word for the next hour. This would somehow end up one of those core memories for me. You know, those memories that come up when you can't sleep at 2am. Yeah, I do know them quite well. <laughs> It also became a full inside joke for my friends for the rest of high school and even a time after. Eventually, we arrived at the hotel. It was not a nice hotel, but it wasn't terrible either. The Pacific Ocean was only a few hundred yards away. New York artist Starfish Beard and I were all in a room together. Athlete got to go to the room with her parents in it. We hauled our things up into our room in the dark. I plopped my bag on one of the two queen-size beds and turned around to see New York and artists looking at me with a finger on their noses. Oh, come on, nobody even said one, two, three, not it. <laughs> I paused for a moment. What? New York? Yeah, so, uh, you get to bunk with Starfish Beard. <laughs> with friends like these, right? <laughs> Who needs enemies? I instantly imagined Starfish Beard snuggling up to me and smelling me. 
I grimaced right as Starfish Beard came huffing and puffing through the door. I might have argued, but I wasn't mean enough to do it right in front of her. No, OP, honestly, go ahead. It's probably some stuff she needs to hear in there, okay? Anyways, we all opened up a window so we could listen to the ocean, and we went to bed after watching some cheesy late-night 90s movie on television. It turned out that I actually didn't have to worry about Starfish Beard sniffing me all night, but she did sleep, well, like a starfish. It started out okay. I'm a light sleeper, but the ocean sounds helped me to get to sleep in only an hour or so. Yay, chronic insomnia! <laughs> but soon after I closed my eyes, I got hit with a freezing toddler foot right in the back of my knee, and then a tiny little hand into my armpit, and then a swift kick to my shins. Eventually, I just had to concede and migrate onto the floor. With the window open, it was freezing! I tried to sleep with my coat and sweatshirt on, but eventually I just had to close the window and sleep in the bathtub. Jesus, that is so miserable. Rather than have a frank and honest conversation, you gotta go sleep in the bathtub? I guess it's only one night, right? <laughs> the issue can be avoided for one night, right? Ugh. I slept a grand total of maybe two hours. The second night after I complained about this to my friends, I took athlete's suggestion and slipped across the bottom of the bed. Starfish Beard was too short to reach me with those heat-seeking appendages. Hey, now that's big brain time. <laughs> the concert itself wasn't all that eventful. After we were done, we were all given free time to go beach walking, while the bus took some of the students to the boardwalk to go shopping. I had spent way too much on my new undergarments and needed to save the rest of the money if I wanted to eat for the rest of this trip. My friends, in great solidarity, made some excuse about why they didn't want to go shopping after all and decided to stay near the hotel and go walk on the beach with me. Starfish Beard, who had originally been wanting to window shop, folded and decided to go beach walking as well. I mean, she is part starfish. Maybe she'd go see her uncle down there or something. It's <laughs> a dumb joke. It was a little bit of a hike down to where the beach was really accessible, maybe a quarter of a mile. By the time we got down there, Starfish Beard was huffing and puffing. <sighs> Guys, I, I, I think I'm just gonna stay here. <sighs> Starfish Beard puffed. Athlete tried to pull her along. Come on, Starfish Beard. There are tide pools on the other side of those rocks. It's low tide. Starfish Beard hesitated for a moment when something caught her eye. What's that? She bellowed, pointing to something in one of the tide pools. Rolling in the shallow waves of that pool was something bright orange. Oh! exclaimed Starfish Beard. It's a starfish! Oh my god, I wanted to get one at the boardwalk! I, I could get that one! It would be free! Dude, what? She's about to end her uncle's life in front of everybody? It's madness. New York. Uh, what if it's, like, alive? You just gonna leave it in the sun and let it die? We watched it for a moment longer. Starfish Beard contemplated diving for it, but expressed that she was too afraid of the waves. The water came up to about my waist at the highest and my knees at the lowest. I'd felt like it was my fault that she hadn't gone to the boardwalk to buy her little souvenir. Eventually, I made the decision. Hey, Starfish Beard, tell you what. I'll go get the starfish for you. We'll check and make sure it's dead, and if it is, you can have it, I offered. Starfish Beard's face lit up, and she quickly agreed. It's a bad decision, you know? Even if it's alive, she's gonna keep it. I took off my shoes, socks, and sweatshirt, then hiked my jeans up over my knees, coached by all my friends to pluck the poor orange creature from the rolling waves. I carefully timed my approach. It was March, I think. And the weather was typical Oregon weather, cold, overcast, and a little bit windy. I didn't want to get my pants wet if I could help it. You ain't cool unless you pee your pants. I ran into the pool as the waves pulled back and I swiped the starfish, jumping and running back as fast as I could. I had managed to only get my sleeve and pants a little bit wet, as the water was deeper than I thought it was at first, but... My mission had been a success. The starfish was also bigger than I first thought. B 
being almost about the size of my hand. You know how long it takes starfishes to get that big? Y y y you better not let starfish beard have it, I swear. The five of us spent a few minutes with the starfish on the beach, poking it and turning it over, until we all decided that it had to be dead. <laughs> starfish beard gave a squeal of delight and put the little treasure in her fanny pack. Lol. That's a big old fanny pack. I guess it fits for a girl with a big old fanny, right? <laughs> uh, I don't even know if you can tell if a starfish is alive or not. I ain't no starfish doctor. I'm a neckbeard scientist for God's sake. Speaking of which, if you watched the episode this far, you're probably enjoying it. I would appreciate it if you subscribed. Then you can consume the freshest daily Reddit content every single day. Promise, swears, he's totally science, just a fact. Make it happen, please, and thank you. So, with that entire adventure over, Starfish Beard decided to go walk out onto the line of rocks that went really far out into the ocean, while the rest of us went further down the beach to see the tide pools. She went really, really far out and sat on a rock, staring out at the sea, probably sighing, I'm guessing. <laughs> hey, shouted New York before we continued on. Just be careful and come back before the tide comes in, all right? The rest of us spent the next several hours playing in the tide pools, finding and harassing sea creatures, <laughs> finding cool colored rocks and shells and picking up sea glass. I felt better once my clothes had dried out. We ran into some other students and played with them for a while. Eventually, it started to get dark. We all headed back to the hotel to clean up before dinner time, where the bus was going to take us into town. Oh, crap, said New York. We forgot about Starfish Beard. <laughs> uh, she's going back home, don't you worry. So at this point, Artist ran back up to the hotel room to make sure Starfish Beard wasn't there, and then we all ran back down to the beach. A million thoughts went through my head. We hadn't seen her in hours. A 15-year-old girl, all alone on a practically empty beach? Had she been snatched on her way back? Did she get lost? Oh lord, could she even swim? Well, Starfish don't really swim, they walk along the bottom. <laughs> uh, when we got back to the beach, we instantly spotted her there, on the rock, right where we had left her. For a moment, I was relieved, but only for a moment. The tide had come in, and those rocks that she had used to get out there were all now about a foot underwater. Starfish Beard! yelled New York over the sound of the waves until eventually, Starfish Beard turned around. You have to hurry! If you go back now, it won't be too bad! And it wouldn't have been that bad. She was gonna get wet, sure, but the rocks were still at least visible. Starfish Beard scrambled and started to go to the first underwater rock. She instantly slipped and skidded on her butt to the lower rock, and then panicked and scrambled back up to the big one. New York, Starfish Beard, don't be an idiot! It's only gonna get worse! Whoa! Artist and I stripped off our shoes and socks and tried to go out together, but those rocks were indeed slick. I was terrified, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one. New York, ever the fearless leader, sent Athlete back to the hotel to find some help. New York, OP, you're the strongest, and I think we're gonna have to drag him back. You're gonna go out all the way. Honest, you go halfway and help OP drag it to where that big gap in the stones is. After this entire mission, do you think Starfish Beard's finally gonna say thank you? <laughs> uh, I'm taking bets. I nodded and I went back out to the rocks. If I could find footing, the rough waves wouldn't be able to knock me sideways. It was hard, but not impossible. Slowly, the two of us made our way down the rock trail. The water was freezing. It just felt like my legs below the knee did not exist anymore. Early onset hypothermia, safer to just leave it in. <laughs> I could tell that one of my feet had been cut by something sharp, but I couldn't feel the pain properly. Artist stopped at the gap and gave me a little push to get across it. After what felt like an eternity, I finally made it to the big rock at the end, and Starfish Beard was there. Sweating, shaking, and hyperventilating. I tried to calm her down, but dang it, it's just hard to do that when you're sort of panicking yourself. I tried to pull her off the rock to no avail, 
her little hands clinging to the rock for dear life. <laughs> uh, she fits the name so well. Eventually, I got the idea to have her ride me piggyback on our return trip. It took her a minute to calm down and accept. Oh boy, I had no idea what I was in for. Starfish Beard was heavy, as you can imagine, and her general round shape made her difficult to hold on to. <laughs> uh, she made up for it by clinging to me for dear life with both her arms and her legs. I took the first two steps and then I slipped big time. Somehow I managed to throw her back onto the big rock before I fell waist deep into the water. I pulled myself back up and shuddered. This was not gonna work. The rocks were just too slick. I couldn't carry both her and myself across them. I looked back at Starfish Beard who said nothing and whose face was beet red, covered in tears, sobbing. I looked down to the sandy area below the water next to the rocks. Uh, sand isn't slippery. Bro, OP out here doing the most to circumvent survival of the fittest, right? <laughs> <laughs> not to be so cold hearted, it's mostly jokes. But come on, you're not even trying to save yourself? Ugh. <clears throat> I have a mechanism that I use sometimes when the world is completely overwhelming. I can just change, shut myself off for a while, and pretend that I'm something or someone else in order to get a job done. It developed when I was a small child going through counseling for depression and anxiety. That actually ended up to be autism, but you know, girls don't usually have autism. I think most people call this a form of masking, but I really take it to the extreme. The problem with it is that the mask, when used at full force, isn't all that intelligent or persuasive. We have a job and we're going to do it. Here, I had a job and I was going to do it. So I slid off the rock and onto the sand beside it. The waves, when they swelled, came all the way up to my shoulders, the icy water engulfing me, and it made it hard to breathe. My muscles felt instantly stiff, and the undertow threatened to pull my feet out from under me, but I was okay with that. I was going to do this. Not worth, not worth, abort the mission! <laughs> I then pulled Starfish Beard by her ankles over to the edge of the rock. She kicked and screamed for a minute and then eventually got the idea. I wanted her to sit on my shoulders. She would barely even get wet. Nah, forget that. I'm dragging you by your ankles all the way through the water <laughs> back to shore. If I have to suffer, we're both suffering. She swung a leg around my neck and I grabbed on. Starfish Beard's hands tangled into my hair and pulled so hard that I would normally scream, but we had a job to do. I took two labored steps, and then a wave hit. It wasn't high, just to my shoulders, but the feeling of getting her butt wet made Starfish Beard panic and screech. She kicked her legs as if by instinct, and gravity took over. She slid down my back into the water. I quickly scrambled and grabbed her legs and wrapped her around my waist, her chubby arms wrapped so tightly around my neck that I could hardly breathe, but that was okay because the ocean was already making that difficult. <laughs> now that her body was half submerged, Starfish Beard was much lighter, thank God. I took one step, and then the next, and then the next. This was going to work. It was going to work. I let out a smile for a moment, took another step, and stepped directly into a hole. I went completely underwater, up over my head, water up my nose, flushing out them sinuses, don't you know? <laughs> uh, not helpful. I had only just managed to hold my breath. I couldn't exactly hear Starfish Beard with the water roaring in my ears, but I felt her kick and her little hands grasped any part of my body that she could reach leaving nail marks on my face and neck, nearly ripping my shirt off my body. Dude, this plan is so ludicrous. <laughs> Nobody but a 15-year-old would think that this would work. These teenagers think they're immortal, you know? And, and OP came very close to finding out that she ain't. I'm so glad this didn't turn out a different way because it seems like it's inches away from that. 
Anyway, Starfish Beard's face, at least, didn't go under the water. Oh yeah, that's the priority here, I guess. <laughs> I grabbed her kicking legs tighter and pulled her into me. I had a job to do. So I took another step and another until about four steps later, my head was back above water. I walked us back as fast as I could will my legs to move, fighting that undercurrent the entire time. I couldn't feel any part of my body anymore. I wasn't even sure if my muscles were responding to me, but gradually the shore did come closer and closer. Jesus, dude. OP is like superhero levels of calm right now. I'd 100% be freaking out. Once I was in knee-deep water, once again, my other friends rushed out to us. New York and artist pried the once again very heavy starfish beard off my back and made her walk the rest of the way. I don't remember very well how we got back to the hotel room, but we did, quite quickly and covered in sand. Starfish beard made a beeline for the bathroom while I, suddenly not so self-conscious, peeled off my heavy, wet clothing from my frozen body. I sighed, wringing out my brand new undergarments now christened with seawater into the sink. I rubbed my reddened skin alive again with the rough, cheap hotel towel and had just pulled on my dry pajamas when I was interrupted by wailing. No, no, not this again! What do you have to cry about? I almost died! How did you not go right into the bathroom and throttle her? <laughs> I'd been so wrapped up in getting warm again, I hadn't noticed that artist, athlete, and New York had all followed Starfish Beard into the bathroom. When I opened the door, I was accosted by such a sight that I will never forget it as long as I live. New York was holding up a shirtless Starfish Beard from under her arms, while Artist was tugging from below on those two sizes too small, not really skinny jeans, Starfish Beard's skin was blindingly white, which made the tiny red lines down her thighs pop out. Red lines from Artist's fingernails digging in, grasping for any kind of grip she could get on that wet, strained fabric. Athlete had the hotel's frail little hairdryer aimed at the edge of the pants, where Artist was working. <laughs> Uh, it's hard enough to take off wet jeans, but if they're super small like this, <laughs> you can't make up a story like this, dude. Uh, that's too funny. Hey, it's no use, cried New York. Stop the blow dryer. It's just making it tighter as it dries. Starfish Beard wailed. J j just leave it. I can just let him dry and then take them off, she sobbed. We can't do that, New York admitted. They're too tight. You lose the circulation to your feet fast. I glanced down at Starfish Beard's feet. The chubby little things were already purple, the sight of which started to make me panic. I I think we need to cut them off, sighed the artist. No, 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 cried Starfish Beard. They're brand new. My my adoptive mom won't buy me new ones. You can't ruin them. New York sighed, admitting defeat. <sighs> I'm sorry, Starfish Beard. I really don't think we could get these off without your feet coming off with them. She turned to me. Oh, Pete, why don't you and Athlete try to procure us some scissors, or she is or something? Artist and I will stay here and uh, keep trying, I guess. Why OP always getting voluntold to do stuff? <laughs> I just got out of the- I'm staying here to dry off. I'm not going on a stupid scavenger hunt for scissors. For the self-pitying whale that I just hauled out of the water. Forget it. <laughs> but me and OP, we built different, I guess. So, Athlete and I did indeed run. Athlete went to her parents, I think, and I ran to the front desk. It took what felt like an eternity to find anyone who worked there, and then when I did finally find someone, it took her forever to find a pair of Fisker scissors from under the front desk that had, frankly, seen better days. I ran, pfft, with scissors, <laughs> back up to our room. <laughs> uh, I'd finally returned to the bathroom when I saw the second leg of those jeans 
pop off of Starfish Beard's purple foot. The wailing had stopped, normal color was slowly being returned to those pudgy little feet, artists in New York were drenched in sweat and second-hand seawater. Yeah, we were all just a mess. And whose fault was that? I I is the person whose fault that was going to apologize? Maybe thank anybody? No, never. Not even once in this story. It's driving me nuts. I don't recall exactly what we ended up doing that evening, but we didn't go with the rest of the class to dinner. I think we pooled our money and ordered a pizza instead. No one said a word. We never talked about this ever again. Except now, me telling you guys. I hope you feel special. I mean, I do, OP. You really broke yourself open. That is a harrowing experience to go through. I suppose we didn't get much of the emotion from it because like OP said, she sort of tuned out. And maybe that's what you gotta do in a situation like this. I hope to never find myself in a situation like this. Whew. After the second night there, we all packed it up, did one last choir performance, then loaded up on the bus to go home. The sun was shining bright and the bus driver had the heat turned on just a little too high. We were maybe an hour before getting to the mall when I noticed it. It started out as a fishy, sweet and sour smell. Gradual. In what seemed like only a few minutes, it grew to become undeniable. The best I could describe it was uh, to leave some seafood flavor tinned cat food out on a hot day. I tried to discreetly tell where the smell was coming from, and when I turned around, I realized it was coming from the very back seat, where Starfish Beard lay on the bench, reading a manga. Jesus, dude, she even smells like the ocean? Have we ever had a beard that was so aptly named? This story's beautiful, OP. <laughs> I must have made a disgusted face, because New York, who was sitting in the seat between us, leaned forward and discreetly said, Yeah, I know, that smell, it it's Starfish Beard, whoa! Athlete, who was sitting in the seat next to me, gagged. Ugh, I know what that smell is. I smelled it in the locker room. She's got that crotch rot! <laughs> uh, said not quite as discreetly, but it seemed like no one else on the bus noticed. Artist, oh come on, I don't think she has uh, crotch rot. Be nice to her. Athlete, well, she probably got the ocean all up in there. <laughs> uh, did you guys see her shower after that old mess? She has something up there, and it's rotting, I'm telling you. <laughs> so cold-blooded. Uh, New York rolled her eyes. Yeah, I don't think so. But maybe, maybe she, like, left a tampon in there too long or something. We should just bring it up to her. Discreetly, we'll be at the mall pretty soon. Ah, uh, yes, the perfect place to bring up sensitive subjects. In the public, at the mall. <laughs> uh, I hopped into the seat between artists in New York and peeked over to Starfish Beard. There really was no denying that that smell was her. Yeah, I say we should, I admitted, but maybe wait until we're closer to the mall. That way, if it is one of those devices, she won't have to think about it for very long. I'm just gonna tell her right now, said New York. We didn't argue. I really didn't want to be the one to broach the subject, to be frank, and I'm sure the others felt the same. Starfish Beard, New York started. In response, Starfish Beard set down her book and sat up. That was when I realized exactly where the smell was coming from. There, I interrupted and pointed to Starfish Beard's fanny pack sitting on the floor in the aisle. The smell is coming from in there. That poor little starfish, he, he didn't stand a chance. It took a moment and some silence before anyone believed me and was brave enough to investigate. At this point, even Starfish Beard was trying to hold back from gagging. Heck, I think she was shocked that no one else on the bus seemed to be noticing these noxious fumes. New York opened the fanny pack and pulled out a sandwich bag containing one very sad and stinky orange starfish. Bro, a sandwich bag? She doesn't offer her starfish uncle any dignity whatsoever. <laughs> uh, bury me in a sandwich bag. <laughs> As it turns out, those starfish that you buy 
have been preserved by a lengthy drying out process. Instead, this starfish had been stuffed into a sandwich bag, <laughs> left in a damp fanny pack, sitting in an overheated bus in the sun for the last four hours. We sat there, debating for a while what we should do, all the while fighting the need to straight up puke. At first, Starfish Beard didn't want to get rid of her treasure, but the smell eventually convinced her that it wasn't worth saving. We decided the starfish had to go, and that could not wait a full hour for us to finally stop. Athlete watched the bus driver and gave us the all-clear signal. I opened the back window, New York chucked the damn thing out, and I closed the window as quickly as I could. No one else seemed to notice. <laughs> I can only imagine some prison litter patrol coming across that baggie of unholiness, which by then would definitely smell of rotting seafood and death because it is both of those things. <laughs> uh, that's so sad to me, dude. What a waste. The rest of the trip went on pretty uneventfully, other than the furious hand washing New York and I underwent in the mall bathroom. Starfish Beard tried to lure me back to Victoria's Secret to spray me with that perfume again, and I avoided that, needless to say. She sprayed herself quite liberally with the stuff, but... On her, it just smelled like baby powder, and that was a much more welcome smell, for the back of the bus at least. There is more to come here shortly, but I went over the character limit. <laughs> I'll be posting part two as soon as Reddit will let me, since I'm sure it's going to delay allowing a newbie to post too much. I don't think there's any constraints like that within my personal subreddit r slash reads, but there is like an overall character count for Reddit, which apparently went over. There's another 50% of the story to go, and I'll get into it another day. We just had a, a, a near-life experience, okay, out there on those rocks, and I'm gonna need some time to recover myself. Somebody come over here and cut my pants off, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, Starfish Beard, welcome back. Let's just try to make sure nobody drowns this time, huh? How a lovelorn leg beard nearly ended me. Part two of two. Cast list, spoiler alert, it's the same. We're gonna skip it then. If you missed the previous video, that link in the description, as per usual, I think this even has a playlist. Isn't that fancy? The rest of the cast is either mentioned once or self-explanatory. This is a summary of the previous bits. I moved to a new school and I made a new group of friends, including a legbeard who went on crazy escapades, including nearly getting herself drowned. And I nearly did the same trying to save her. She is utterly obsessed with a boy named Woodsy, but she's too shy to talk to, well, any boy. <laughs> she sighs a lot. It is a signature anime-like sigh that I still occasionally hear in my sleep. Might be some signs of PTSD there, uh, but I ain't no doctor. I have developed a new complex worrying about people smelling me. All of that stuff is contained in the first part, so again, please check it out if you have not already. And now, it's time for the rest of the story. Sometime later, at our next out-of-town event, a new friend. Oh good, let's remain hopeful. <laughs> I don't recall exactly what event it was, but we had gone out of town to the big city for some workshop for choir. It was an event where we had left before the sun was up, and we planned to return sometime in the late evening. The bus stopped in a town at the midpoint coming back, so we could have some dinner. There were several restaurants within a four block radius, and us kids were all set free with instructions to return to the bus by 7pm. So my friends and I decided that we would go to get some Chinese food, and much to my surprise, Woods and his best friend, whom I shall call January, decided that this sounded good. They gave us a booth that was way too small for a group that contained uh, a handful of plus-sized girls. I found myself wedged between New York and January. Oh, you don't even get separate booths? Beautiful. It's gonna get awkward real quick. <laughs> they handed out the menu, and this time it was me that sighed. Uh, this was one of those places that served heaping platters of food. 
but each plate cost like $10. And remember, this was like 20 years ago when $10 actually meant something. <laughs> I had $7 left in my pocket after the trip as I only had the $20 that my mom shoved in my hand before we left at 6 a.m. And my bank had conveniently suspended my bank card that morning for trying to buy Starbucks out of town. Boy, they are on high alert at that bank. <laughs> uh, I went all the way to the Philippines and my bank was like, yeah, that's probably fine. <laughs> Dang, exclaimed Woods. I've only got $6 left. All I can get is soup and a soda. Oh, I know, I sighed. Me too, and I'm starving. Woods paused for just a moment. Hey, you wanna go like halfsies with me on one of these platters, ha? Huh? I would have normally been way too shy to accept such an invitation, but I wasn't kidding when I say I was starving. Lunch had come from a crappy vending machine. Woods swapped spaces with January. We split an entree and got our own drinks. Artist was nice enough to give us her leftover fried rice because dang, teenage boys can eat, even when they're babies, dude. I got a four-year-old and a nine-month-old, and that's all they think about all the time, always. <laughs> I bring this up in the story because this was how it started. After this day, Woods began to hang out with us. Not all the time, not every day, but he seemed to be around a lot more as the days went by. This made Starfish Beard oddly quiet. Her tiny eyes were wide with wonder and growing bravery. I don't think it's gonna go the way she thinks it's gonna go. <laughs> but it's time to fast forward to story, The Breakup? Oh my God, did they actually date? So this next part, I have to get to, but it feels like a blank in my memory because I wasn't there. I only have the very brief summary that New York gave me. Starfish Beard asked Woods out. Uh, <laughs> she did so in the cafeteria. She did so in front of a few of his friends. Woods had a confused look. One of his friends laughed at her and Starfish Beard ran away crying. I mean, yeah, that's rough, but also learning experience. OP continues that I, much like many of you, am a little unsatisfied with this ending. So I'm going to post the theatrical version based on what I know these people are like, the way that I figure it must have gone down. Artistic license is a thing, have at it, OP. I'm pretty sure it was Athlete that decided that she had had enough of the whining and the sighing. She probably goaded Starfish Beard into it. Starfish Beard had a list of what she wanted to finally confess to her malady. <laughs> Malady. Uh, oh, Woods was finishing his lunch with his usual group of friends, mostly musical jocks. Starfish Beard waddled over there and sputtered some well overthought romantic spiel, probably in her super soft rambling voice. Woods, who can be really clueless about such things, just sort of looked on blankly. I'm serious. If you are being subtle, Woods just isn't going to understand. Woods' best friend, January, caught on and just busted up laughing. I mean, this was the quiet girl, busting out of her clothes like a Pillsbury biscuit, <laughs> professing her love to one of the most popular boys in school. I mean, sure, it was kind of mean to laugh, but this was still high school. Like I said, lessons learned. Harsh way to do it, but those are the lessons that stick. Many years later, I asked Woods what really went down when she asked him out, and he gave me a somewhat horrified look and said, Oh my god, starfish beard? He had no idea about her obsession. He didn't even remember the alleged asking out. When it came to blubbering high school girls, yeah, he was pretty dumb. <laughs> <laughs> this event then led to what we shall call the emo months. Starfish Beard didn't come to the cafeteria to even pretend to eat. She stopped talking about anything. She even wore black lipstick and ugly, messy, heavy black eyeliner for a while. 
New York artist and I started to grow worried about her. Athlete was just thankful she wasn't constantly going on and on about Woods. Now maybe she's legitimately heartbroken. I don't want to automatically say attention-seeking behavior, but I can't help automatically thinking it. <laughs> so after summer vacation, Starfish Beard came back looking like her old self again. She wore the same clothes, but now they were even tighter. The emo makeup had gone away, but she was still <sighs> sighing TM. <laughs> Only now it was more over celebrities than people that she knew in real life. Is that more healthy or less healthy? I'm very confused. <laughs> she didn't much mention Woods again, but I did spot a few longing glimpses that she shot his way. When Woods would come over to hang out at our lunch table, Starfish Beard would quietly excuse herself and sit on the bleachers nearby and just read, occasionally glancing over at us. And sighing, probably. It doesn't say sighing, but probably sighing too, right? <laughs> Whenever Woods would come hang out with us in the band room, Starfish Beard would go off to the quote-unquote bathroom, but just not come back. Not that I blamed her. Heck, at first, before I knew a little more, I thought Woods was being terribly insensitive to Starfish Beard by coming over so much, but my friends had other ideas. Man, Woods is coming by a whole lot lately, mentioned Athlete, shortly after Starfish Beard had vacated the table. Yeah, grinned Artist. I bet I know why. Oh yeah, laughed New York. I do know why. <laughs> I paused for a moment. Uh, why? He's got a crush on you, OP, said Artist plainly. Oh, Athlete beamed. Yeah, uh, that's gotta be it. I blushed, unsure of what to say. Yeah, said New York, but I mean, you got a boyfriend in college, right? You aren't gonna give that for some sophomore boy. I froze. Uh, I, uh, I don't have a boyfriend. What? exclaimed Artist. No way, but Angela said you had a boyfriend in college, and that's why you never talk to boys. <laughs> Uh, what? Yeah, nodded New York. I heard the same thing from Angela too, when you first got here. I was puzzled. <laughs> At this time, I had no idea who Angela even was. Oh good, then I don't feel bad for not remembering her. <laughs> Later, I would find out that she was a tiny blonde senior girl, captain of the ROTC club, who looked like she had a stick up her butt all the time really reminiscent of Angela from The Office. I had spoken to her exactly never before. I've never dated anyone, OP admits. But do you like Woods? Asked Artist with an inquisitive smile. Oh snap, it's really going down. I had to pause for a moment. A part of me still didn't allow myself to crush on someone that one of my friends had been into for so long. It felt like a betrayal. On the other hand, it had been months since the whole thing had gone down in flames, and it was obvious that Starfish Beard wasn't going to pursue Woods further, at least not openly. And I did like the guy. He was one of the smartest people in our school. We had the same interests. He was cute and charming. Yes, I finally blurted out. I mean, I think so. It's definitely gonna cause drama with Starfish Beard, but I think OP is, is in the right here. What do you expect me to do? Sit around and wait for the love that will never blossom? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good on all that. So at this point, of course, ooh, squeals artist. <laughs> uh, you should go ask him out, like, tomorrow. If he comes to the band room early, we'll just make ourselves scarce, she winked at me. The rest of my friends pumped me up for the rest of lunch. Hell yeah, bro! You got this, dude! Headbutt me, dude! Boom! <laughs> I think I'm getting gassed up too, you know? <laughs> but OP does admit, honestly, I was terrified. I had never asked anyone out before. Shortly before coming to this school, I'd gotten rid of some serious braces with the headgear and those Coke bottle glasses. I had about probably zero self-esteem. I mean, this guy rejected Starfish Beard, and 
I was also a girl with a little extra weight. I also still felt guilty about how Starfish Beard might feel. That bridge is burnt. You gotta get yours while you can get it. It's just puppy love anyways. High school is such a serious thing. These problems matter. After thinking about this situation for way too long, I found myself alone in the band room with Woods, who was trying to fix a speaker. So, Woods, I began. What are you doing later? I'm fixing the speaker so I can take it to the gym tonight, he replied. I want to play some music for me and my girlfriend to dance to. I haven't seen her in forever. Shattering glass dot mp3. Oh, oh, that that sounds very sweet. I stammered. Dude, that is wow. Somebody gave you some bad intel. Who reconned this whole situation? So OP, of course, pretty much went straight to her friends with this revelation. New York and artist immediately winced with cringe. New York. Oh, I forgot about that. I'm so sorry. You forgot. You forgot? <laughs> uh, no, dude. What the hell is that? Oh, I thought you guys heard about something that I hadn't yet or something, admitted Athlete. She's still in middle school. She got held back. They've been dating for like four years. I'm so sorry, Artist said sincerely. Did you get to the part where you actually asked him out? No, I admitted. I, I was able to abort the mission. Are they trying to set you up for something? Th this seems like it's more than meets the eye, right? S-U-S. Sus. And I was okay with all of that. I'd been charmed by Woods, but really I was just fine being friends. Over time, Woods and I actually became good long-term friends. We went to different colleges, but lived in the same town and worked together in an IT department for a huge company, and we made a pretty good team. But you guys aren't here to hear me gush about my friends. It's time for the final story, and the most beardy thing that Starfish Beard ever did. Breathing, existing, oh I got it, <laughs> totally nailed it. The homecoming dance. Yeah, I guess that's where all good stories come to rest, isn't it? Because high school is a serious thing, and these problems matter. <laughs> uh, in all honesty, I had forgotten that the homecoming dance was even happening. When I was asked out to the dance outside of my economics class, I had never met that boy before. He was my age, a sophomore, a little tall, lanky, and, well, beardy. He wasn't overtly neck beardy, although he did have a neck beard and generally unkempt facial hair. Honestly, I think most sophomores are just happy they have facial hair at all. <laughs> he would also wear a fedora to homecoming, but I mean, it was Y2K. That was the style at the time. So I tied an onion to my belt, which was the style at the time. So this dude, he had a face that reminded me of a sad wire haired terrier. <laughs> he even had those overgrown eyebrows, and his most unfortunate attribute was that he was a little smelly. It wasn't really a bad smell. He kind of smelled like he must own ferrets. Several ferrets. <laughs> but I mean, it sure beat the overwhelming smell of Axe body spray, which was completely in vogue at this time. Seriously, my school actually banned the stuff one semester because two guys had a body spray fight in the hallways. Bro, high school is a trip, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, this fella, well, he was not like a beard in that he was actually a pretty nice guy. Not like a nice guy TM nice guy. So like a, a good guy, I guess. He was a little over the top. Frankly, obsessively happy that I said yes. Called my house every night that week to make sure that I didn't change my mind. But he wasn't condescending. He wasn't gross. I figured he was just sort of an edgelord, so I'm gonna call him Ferret Lord 
on account of the ferrets. Winky face. <laughs> Don't hit me with the winky face. I got some PTSD there. Were the ferrets actually confirmed? I mean, I guess it's a very distinct smell. Anywho, my friends were a little less enthused about my homecoming date. Athlete had a date that she was considering ditching, and the rest planned to go stag. Starfish Beard, meanwhile, was oddly quiet. This was a little weird for Starfish Beard. Usually, if one of the other girls mentioned a crush, she would go full on gushing about potential romance. The day of the homecoming finally came. Ferret Lord came and picked me up, backing up into a tree near our driveway, by the way. <laughs> Uh, beautiful. <laughs> and we drove to the dance. He was wearing some cologne, which only really enhanced the ferret smell. I was a little upset because we were late, as the tree incident delayed us by about 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, it's the best way to start the night. I missed out on group photos with my friends. Ferret Lord wanted to get pictures together, and... I think I said yes, but I have never seen those pictures. <laughs> Thankfully, one of the other girls brought a disposable camera, and we have several poorly lit and poorly taken photos to remember that night. Ah, memories. I remember. Oh, I remember. Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember that. I found my group of friends right away, and I split away from my date for a long time. We danced to all the fast songs together. None of us, except for Athlete, were in very good shape. So we challenged each other to jump for as many songs as we could until we were exhausted or, in New York's case, spewed all over the floor. <laughs> uh, Starfish Beard didn't want to join in, however. She held down the table that we claimed with her head in her hands, looking a little bit sad. We each took turns trying to drag her onto the dance floor with little to no success. Well, you tried. That's all anyone could ask. As the night wore on, the DJ started playing more and more slow songs. My date magically reappeared, and we did that awkward high school, middle school slow dance. <laughs> you just walk in a circle. Anything else is too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> the second or third slow song in a row, I spotted New York slow dancing with artists and smiled. Meanwhile, Starfish Beard had never looked mopier. We broke apart and returned to the table when they started playing some 90s rap song. A school appropriate 90s rap song? I don't know any. <laughs> OP sits down next to Starfish Beard and leans over to yell over the loud music. Hey, Starfish Beard, you doing all right? Starfish Beard, in response, burst into tears and ran to the ladies' room. Oh boy, I had never seen New York roll her eyes so hard. Artist sighed, I nodded and went after her. It was several decibels quieter in the bathroom. There was nothing to cover up the sound of Starfish Beard's sobs. Now, true enough, by this time, I had seen Starfish Beard sob a fair amount, but this was like an uncontrolled depression tantrum. Her face was burning red, she had tears all over her face, and she also had these huge black streaks from her makeup running. I mean, I am a bleeding empath, not that it helps anyone. It took everything that I had in that moment to not just burst out sobbing too. Matter of fact, I did cry just a little. Normally, I might cry too, but I think this card has been overplayed. You ever hear about the, the boy who cried wolf? Now, every time she does this, I'm like super skeptical. Oh, starfish beard, I spoke softly, putting a hand on her back. What's wrong? Why are you so upset? It took starfish beard several struggling breaths to finally be able to reply. It's just that... I like this boy for so long. Uh, we've known each other since kindergarten. I just, I just love him so much. God damn, dude. I don't know what to tell you. Work on yourself, okay? 
Your personality does not reside in another person. <sighs> At this point in the conversation, I had assumed, like many of you readers, that Starfish Beard was talking about Woods again. I just love him so much, Starfish Beard continued. And then I have to watch while he dates and falls in love with my best friend. <laughs> she then went back to wailing. I was stunned. In a moment of denial, I thought she could mean athlete but she had had some spat with her date soon after the pictures were taken and not even danced with him once. You... you mean Ferret Lord? I asked. He was my best friend in fourth grade, and I liked him ever since then. I thought he was gonna ask me out, but he asked you out instead. <laughs> Look, my dude, you can't just call dibs on every other human you see. <laughs> I knew he existed, so he should date me. Like, dude, what are you doing? This is 100% legbeard behavior. At this point, OP says she was stunned, as would we all be, I suppose. My brain infarcted. I simply didn't know what to do. I was out at a dance with the first guy who had ever asked me out. A part of me had such low self-esteem that I doubted anyone would ever ask me out again. On the other hand, this was someone my friend felt like she had a true connection to. To me, he was just a nice guy that smelled like ferrets, and I still felt guilty for even thinking of asking out Woods. It was at that point that New York came into the bathroom to see what was taking us so long. Oh my god, New York grunted in disgust. Come on, Starfish Beard, quit moping about some boy. I don't think New York knew at the time that Starfish Beard was moping about the boy that I had brought to the dance. The two of us finally calmed Starfish Beard down enough and washed the makeup streaks off her face and went back out to the dance. We had to have been in there for at least a half an hour. Are you feeling okay? Ferret Lord asked me when I returned. And I told the biggest lie that all women say from time to time. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. But things were not, in fact, fine. I spent the next couple of songs thinking about what I should do. In the end, I chose self-sacrifice. I don't agree with it. I did see it coming, but I can't agree with it. People like who they like. Let's understand that. Nobody has dominion over any other human being. <sighs> okay, so when the next slow dance came on, Ferret Lord stood up and asked me to dance. I paused for a moment. Uh, maybe... Do you think that maybe you could dance with my friend Starfish Beard for this song? Because she's really been wanting to dance with you. This did not go over well. <laughs> I don't recall what Ferret Lord said, but uh, it wasn't very nice towards Starfish Beard. I was offended on my friend's behalf. We had a few short words, and I asked him that he leave me alone until we went home. Ferret Lord stormed off, and I didn't even see him until he drove me home about an hour later in complete silence. My friends and I tried to recover the evening, but honestly, it was just too far gone. What the hell does Starfish Beard do to that boy? <laughs> uh, considering her track record, yeah, I guess I could see it. From OP's point of view, she's like, hey, dance with my friend. From that guy's point of view, it's like, he just got asked to dance with his ex-stalker? <laughs> and that's not a very good look. Aftermath. Ferret Lord didn't talk to me for a long time after that. I thought he was mad at me over my request, but he said he thought I must not like him much, so there wasn't much of a point, which, yeah, fair enough. Very mature of him, I think. He stopped smelling like ferrets after he moved out of his parents' house, so I'm told. He's a software engineer now, with a lovely Amazon of a wife. The kids are gonna be all right! <laughs> Starfish Beard acted as though this entire thing didn't happen. She had run back to the bathroom after I had the blow-up with Ferret Lord, but at least she seemed to recover faster. 
A part of me wondered if she just didn't want the rest of us to have a boyfriend while Starfish Beard was still single. Well, I gotta agree with that. You nailed that thing down 100%, OP. In the long run, however, Starfish Beard would find someone to love. I think they met online. They got married, had three kids. Then he dumped her while on deployment. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> She had a boyfriend before the divorce was even finalized. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I think some people just can't stand to be single. That's 100% what it is. She finds her value within another person, which is not a healthy way to be, but I guess she eked out an existence because she had another three kids with husband number two. And I know that they are actually quite happy. And honestly, I'm happy for her. I mean, yeah, I hope she develops her own interests and personality, but like I said, the kids is gonna be all right. Look at her go. The rest of us, you aren't gonna get an epilogue quite yet because, well, you'll see. The week after homecoming, I was setting up in the choir room alone when Woods came in and sat down beside me. Hey, OP, he inquired nonchalantly. You're single, aren't you? I mean... I thought you had a boyfriend in college, but then you went with Ferret Lord to homecoming. I froze, not sure what to say. Did Woods and his longtime girlfriend break up? At this point, Woods and I had been best friends so long that I had sort of forgotten that dating could be on the table. Am I a nice girl? Oh my god, am I a terrible person? No, you're fine. Everything's fine. Uh, yeah, I am single. OP replies after way too long of a pause. So, I got a friend that would really like to go out with you, Woods continued. He wanted me to ask you out for him because he was too afraid to ask you directly. Oof. <laughs> Damn, dude. Why you gotta do this? It took my brain another minute to crash and then reset. Oh, man. Maybe I can't have guy friends. Uh, his name's Scoutbeard, explained Woods, and this is where I'm going to leave you. I would like to think eventually I can get in a short saga about my ex-boyfriend Scoutbeard. I mean, it has all of the things, inappropriate age gap, neckbeard nest, physical neckbeard, fedoras, that old red flag bingo. I again submit this specimen for categorization by the experts. Was I unfair to call her a beard? I would like to think that she's at least a recovered beard. I hope you enjoyed this story today. I hope you have a lovely day, evening, or night. Or morning. I guess that's part of the day. But yes, definitely a leg beard as far as I'm concerned. There was somewhat of a recovery, but I still don't know that she ever really was truly able to find herself. Then again, maybe her true self is just wife and mother, and that's completely admirable as well. So yeah. I would say reformed beard. A little more introspection wouldn't hurt Starfish Beard, but it seems like she eked out a living. Everything turned out all right. I'm looking forward to checking out the Scout Beard Saga. Really love the way that Mother of Rain writes her stories. So I'm hoping to see some more quite soon. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure. I hope you like, comment, subscribe, share the video around if you should like. We got many links in the description. Social medias you can follow me on. TikTok, Discord, etc., etc. Big, huge, giant thank you to my Patreon patrons, my YouTube channel members. You guys just beautiful, helping me out. The musical read is coming shortly. I think at the end of the next Beard School Saga is when it'll work for me. But regardless, I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. Keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands. Always remember, friends, that you are loved. You are worthy. You definitely, definitely deserve it. And I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye bye.